What's up, math scholars? It's Tuesday morning. The sun is shining, and everybody is rested up from their four-day weekend. So, who is excited to learn lesson one point four this morning? <laughs> it's called uh, writing equations and inequalities. Let's talk real quick about the word equation. Do you know what the word equation means? It's going to have a what in it? Equation. That's a hint. Equal sign. Very good. An equation will have an equal sign in it. Look at that root word. I feel like an English teacher today. And then do you know what symbol an inequality would have in it? Jose? No, not a variable. Good guess, though. Caspian? Nope. Good guess, though. Uh, no, I thought you would know for sure. Uh, greater than or less than or greater than or equal to or less than or equal to would make something an inequality. It means they're unequal. They're not equal. One's bigger than the other. Okay, so that's the symbols we'll be utilizing today. Let's do it. So the first thing up is a math sentence. We're going to talk about what a math sentence is. Again, I've said I'm going to feel like an English teacher today. For something to be a math sentence, it has to have um, nouns and verbs. Uh-huh. And in math, the nouns will be the numbers and the variables. And the verbs, I'll give you a few examples of some verbs. The verbs are things with the word is. So for example, is equal to is your math verb. That would be this one. Is not equal to would be this one. Is approximately equal to. Yeah, it sounds like you guys know that one. Squiggly line. Um, is there any I'm not thinking of? How about is less than this alligator mouth is greater than I'm going to run out of space. This one is less than or equal to this, and then is greater than or equal to. This one. I think that's it. I don't think I missed any, but it is Tuesday morning, so if you can think of one I forgot, let me know. So let's look at some examples of a math sentence. If I would tell you like 2x plus 7, those would be like my nouns. 2 is a number, x is a variable, they're adding 7. The way we're going to turn into a sentence is adding one of these math verbs, like is equal to. So that would make it a full math sentence. Now something that would not be a full math sentence is if I had just left it at the 2x plus 7. That's like a hanging phrase. It just doesn't have a verb to make a complete sentence. Well, let's try another math sentence. M divided by 3 is greater than 10. And the whole is greater than, you put an alligator mouth in. My teachers taught me my alligator mouth always eats the bigger guy, so it always eats the greater value. M divided by 3 is greater than 10. And the non-example would be M divided by 3. There's no, nothing with an is. There's no verb. So it's not a sentence. Okay. Any questions before we try a few examples? Wait a second. All right. Pause, pause. So our instructions on this slide are write an equation or an inequality from the following phrase. The sum of 8 and a number n is equal to 15. Very, very similar to what we did last week, but we're adding that is equal to this week to make it a sentence. So any volunteer think they've got this? I can write down the equation you came up with. Anthony? Perfect. So last week all of you did 8 plus n, but now we're adding one is equal to 15. Go ahead and read this one. The product of 5 and a number y is at least 22. Here's where it's going to get a little harder. Is at least. So you have to think about what that means. Does it mean it's going to be smaller than 22? Or does it mean it's going to be bigger than 22? You pick the correct symbol. What do you guys think? The product of 5 in a number y, that's easy. But how do we say it's at least 22? Kenneth? 
Which way do you want your alligator facing? The 22 or the 5y? I think it's actually going to be facing the 5y. So the term at least is like saying if you're in high school, you are at least 14 years old. It means you're either 14 or something higher than that. I don't think there's any 13 year olds, are there? Yeah. Oh, you're still friends. 13. I'm not 13. Oh, you're friends. All right, so I should have said to be in high school, you should be at least 13 years old. It means you're going to be 13 or higher than that. So the product of 5 and y is at least 22. It's either going to be equal to 22 or higher than 22. So I have the alligator facing this way. The stuff is going to be bigger than 22 or equal. The difference of a number x and 7 is 19. The difference of a number x and 7 is 19. Who's got it? Kenneth. Did you say divided by? We're going to do subtracting. Difference means subtracting. So x minus 7, and then what are you going to do? Uh-huh. 19. x minus 7 equals 19. Oh, there's one more down here hiding out. I need to move my little boxes to see it. The quotient of a number b and 7 is more than 25. That's going to be a little tricky. We're going to have to think about that is more than. The quotient of a number b and 7. You guys remember quotient from last week, right? What's quotient? Division. Is more than 25. Which way should our alligator face? Jose? Perfect. More than 25. So this number is bigger than 25. Very good. Ooh, this one's going to be tricky. Let's read it together. The sum of b and 12 is greater than 3, but less than 16. Do anybody have any ideas about this one? Caspian? Um, 16, and then a greater than sign, and of course 16, um, 2 plus 12. Perfect. And would you put the 3 in front of it? I put the 3 right here, yep, with my symbol facing like that. Perfect. So we normally arrange these from smallest to largest. So we put our smallest number 3 on the far left, our largest number 16 on the far right, and then the b plus 12 is somewhere in there. We know it's bigger than 3, so we went with this symbol. We know it's smaller than 16, so we went with this symbol. Isn't that cool? So it means it lives between those two values. Lives in between. All right, these are called checks. Check whether the given number is a solution of the equation or the inequality. So when they say to test a number, they're going to have us test x equals 5. You're just going to travel up to here where you see an x. You're going to put the number 5 in, and you're going to see if that would check out and it would make the sentence true. You're seeing if your math sentence is true. What do we think for x equals 5? It is true. Because 5 plus 14 is 19, and so that would make it true. And I normally do a check mark if it's true. Yes, it is true. Check mark. This one over here is an inequality. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this x equals 10. We'll put the 10 in for x right here. And we're going to see if this state statement's true. Uh, 3 times 10 is 30. 30 minus 7 is 23. Is 23 less than 23? Yeah. No. 23 is equal to 23. So if it had an equal sign, if it had been less than or equal to, I'd say yes. But it's not less than, so no way. All right, you're basically, we haven't really taught you how to solve equations yet. You're basically supposed to think of what number plus 17 would be 22. So what number plus 17 is 22? 5. 5, very good. All right, what number plus 4 is 16? 12. Okay. And then what number minus 8? 3. Well, hard. 11. Yeah. We didn't officially teach you how to solve these. Did you learn last year how to solve them? No. You did. Some did, some didn't. But technically, if you were showing your work, you'd be doing a minus 17 on both sides and getting the 5. That's how you show your work. We're not quite into that yet. And that's how you do these. How would you technically solve this with an algebra equation? Minus 4 on both sides? Raise your hand if you did that method last year. 1, 2, 3, a couple. 
All right, and then technically, if you're solving this, you do a plus eight on both sides, get 11. So only a few of you did that last year. All right, quiet down. We're going to read this next word poem together. Everybody's looking for. Everybody's looking forward. Okay. We're going to do this one together. I just need everybody to stop talking now. I know you're in groups, but you can look up here and close your mouth. All right, you have saved... $78 to buy a snowboard that costs 150 How much more money do you need to save to be able to buy a snowboard? So what would we do in the calculator to figure that one out? Um, Ray? Yeah, so 150 minus 78. Can somebody type that in? Or we can do borrowing, I guess. $72. We'll just do a quick subtraction. You don't need to write that down, I don't think. We're just trying to read and think on this. You write everything down? All right, we'll pause this. All right, another word comp for us to read and think about. A basketball player scored 351 points last year. If the player plays 18 games this year, will an average of 20 points per game be enough to beat last year's total? Ray, how do we figure this out? Good. What is 20 times 18? And so will they beat last year's record? Yes. And so just a quick multiplication. All right, last one, and I'll let you have some homework time to start the homework. We do have homework. You buy a storage case that can hold 150 toy cars. You have 132 right now. Let's write an expression that describes how many more cars we can buy and still have no more cars than the case will hold. So how are we going to do this? We have 132 now. <coughs> We're going to add on who knows how many. We don't know how many we can add on yet. But we need to be what? Equal to, this number needs to be equal to or smaller than the 150. Because we don't want to buy more cars than our case will hold. So if we buy 24 cars, will they fit in the case, right? So no, they won't all fit in the case. Because the 132 with the 24 is going to be 156. So he said 6 won't fit in the case. Okay, 6 will not fit in that case. All right, so your homework is here, but it is captured in Polaris. If you have been looking in Polaris for the book assignment, if you want to use the books under your desk to get a start on it, you can. They're underneath. There's, they're the red ones. Make sure you always grab in a red one. Okay, and thanks for stay tuning and watching the video.